Nextcloud is an amazing alternative for Google Drive and lets you sync pretty much anything from a few folders to entire hard drives with your own personal cloud. It also comes with tons of apps, such as a calendar that you can sync with your mobile phone. Um, it can save all of your contacts from your phone. Uh, you can have a password manager such that you never ever have to remember your passwords for any website again. And it also comes with online editors for Microsoft Office documents. And all you really need to get your own private cloud up and running is an old computer running some flavor of Linux, as well as a somewhat fast and stable internet connection at home. Now I've put together my own home server using some old parts from previous PC builds and if you're interested in the entire building process then check out the video right here. So in today's video I'm gonna show you how to install Nextcloud on Linux, how to make Nextcloud run from a different hard drive than your system drive, um, giving you basically indefinite space to save files on, how to set up DNS for remote access of your cloud and finally, and most importantly, how to set up TLS to make your cloud secure. Now in this tutorial, I will be using Snappy to install my Nextcloud instance. Now this is basically the easiest and fastest way, especially for beginners, to get Nextcloud up and running. Snaps are basically self-contained um, images of some software that basically have no dependencies other than, of course, having Snap installed in the first place, making them super easy to use. Now, if you do not wish to use Snap for your Nextcloud installation, then check out this video on how to install Nextcloud on Ubuntu Server 18.04, long-term support the traditional way, and don't forget to come back for the rest of the video. But with having said that, let's jump right into the tutorial. First, you want to make sure that Snap is actually running on your system. Now, in case you're using Ubuntu 16.04 or Ubuntu 18.04, Snap is already installed. Now, if this is not the case for you, then you can type in sudo apt update followed by sudo apt install snapd. Next, as a non-root user, type in sudo snap install nextcloud, enter the sudo password and wait for nextcloud snap to be installed. Now, assuming that you don't have any other web apps running on your home server yet, and if you know your IP address of your home server, you can basically just open up your browser, enter the IP address of your home server, and you should land on the Nextcloud login page. Here, you want to select a username for your Nextcloud instance, as well as a very strong password. Hit Finish Installation, and after a few seconds, the Nextcloud install should be done. In the last video, I showed you how to format and mount large hard drives into the Linux file system. If you don't know how to do this, then definitely check out the video in the top right hand corner. And today I'm going to show you how to combine these drives into one virtual drive. First, type apt-get update followed by apt-get install mhddfs. Then create a directory where you want your fused file system to live in. In my case, this will be under mount slash cloud. Next, we're going to open fstab using the vim editor. Underneath the mount directives of our hard drives, we are going to add mhddfs, hashtag, then the directory of our first drive, comma, the second drive, comma, the third drive, followed by the directory where we want to fuse all of these previous drives onto, followed by the keyword fuse, then allow other, which basically means that uh, users that are not root have also access in this file system, comma, non-empty. Now, obviously you want to make sure that you don't have anything inside of the mount cloud directory that has the same name as stuff that is inside of cloud one, two, and three. Finally, the two zeros indicate that we don't want to check the file system for errors as we already check the individual drives for errors on each boot. And finally, by typing in mount-a, you can see that our free cloud directories are mounted to our mount-cloud directory. In the next step, we are going to copy all of our files from Nextcloud into the mount cloud location. Now, initially, when installing Nextcloud using snap, all of our files lie within var snap nextcloud common nextcloud data. So as a root user, type in cp-a, then the location of your nextcloud data enter a dot behind it, followed by the new location on the external hard drive. So in my case, this will be mount cloud slash data. Also make sure that the data directory in the new location doesn't yet exist. Next, we need to tell Nextcloud that it should look in a different data directory. 
In order to do so, go to var slash snap slash nextcloud, then followed by a number. In my case, this is 13,453. I think this might uh, depend on your installation slash nextcloud slash config. And as a root, edit the config.php file. We are going to use the vim editor. Type i in order to start editing. And under data directory, instead of var snap nextcloud common nextcloud data, we want to put our new directory. So in my case, this would be mount slash cloud slash data or whichever directory you've chosen for your nextcloud installation. Hit escape and type colon wq in order to save the file and restart nextcloud by typing in snap disable nextcloud followed by snap enable nextcloud. Now, if you did this and try to access any files on your nextcloud, you might realize that you're actually not able to show any of the files anymore. Now, I've actually had to kind of pull my hair in order to figure out what the issue was here, but the solution was surprisingly easy. Go back to the command line and type in snap connect nextcloud colon remove dash media. Now, what this does is basically it allows Nextcloud to search for a data directory outside of the actual installation of the Nextcloud snap. So basically outside of the operating system drive, which obviously in this case is going to be my mount slash cloud directory. And voila, if you reload, you can see you can access all of your files without any issues. Now, obviously, up until now, we have only accessed our next cloud using the local IP address. Obviously, if we were to try to access from the outside world, we wouldn't be able to access our own cloud. Now, while some people might only want to be able to access their cloud in their local network, what I want to do is to be able to access all of my files whenever I'm also on the go. And for this, we're going to have to set up dynamic DNS or domain name system. You see, the IP address that you usually have at home changes whenever your router reconnects to the internet. So trying to use this IP address for your cloud isn't very clever. However, there are services out there that allow you to report your public IP address whenever it changes to a service, which basically allows you to access your home server using a regular domain. Now, while there are many companies that provide free DNS services, the one that is, in my opinion, the best is Cloud DNS. Now, what is so cool about Cloud DNS is that it's absolutely free and you don't have to renew your DNS names every month, such as providers like NoIP. So set up an account and log in to Cloud DNS. Now, under DNS zones, click on Add New and click on Free Zone. Then enter a name for your domain. In my case, I'm going to use speedbreaker.dnsabr.com. And with that, we have successfully created a name server entry pointing our speedbreaker.dnsabr.com domain name to one of the cloud DNS servers. Next, you want to log into your router in order to figure out your current public IP address. Copy it and on cloud DNS, click on the A and enter a new A type record. Leave the host empty and paste your current IP address under points 2. On the right hand side, click on the two little arrows and enable dynamic URL. Now, basically, you want to make sure that your public IP address is always up to date on Cloud DNS's services in order to make sure that your URL is always pointing to your current IP address. Now, you can either report IP address changes using Python, Perl, or PHP scripts. But in our case, we are simply going to copy the URL, which we'll then put into our router configuration. So copy the URL there. In your router, look for a DIN DNS setting. In my case, this is under Internet and Permit Access. Here we want to enable Use DIN DNS, use a user-defined DIN DNS provider, enter the update URL we've just copied from Cloud DNS, Use your domain name that you've created, so in my case, speedbreaker.dnsabr.com. Use your username for Cloud DNS as well as your Cloud DNS password. Hit apply, and now you can see that the DIN DNS is enabled, and after a few seconds, you should see that the IPv4 status shows locked on. Now, in order to access our Nextcloud instance from the outside internet, we have to make sure to enable port forwarding in our router. So once again, in your router settings, look for the port sharing or port forwarding settings page. 
Select your home server on the device and forward port 80 to your home server. Additionally, I would recommend to enable encryption on your Nextcloud installation. I'm going to show you how to do this in just a second. And for this, you want to also forward port 443. Now, finally, you can enter the domain name that you've created with Cloud DNS in your browser. And if everything runs well, you should see this blue Nextcloud landing page. However, before you can actually access your Nextcloud installation, you're going to have to set up trusted domains. So to do so, go back to your var snap nextcloud, then a number, then nextcloud config, and edit the config.php file. And under trusted domains, add a new entry. So in my case, this would be a one, the arrow, and then speedbreaker.dnsabr.com. Make sure not to forget the comma after the entry, hit escape, colon, WQ. Now, after a quick restart of the Nextcloud snap, you should finally be able to connect to your Nextcloud installation using a browser and your Cloud DNS domain name. Finally, I'm going to show you how to set up TLS or encryption on your Nextcloud installation. Now, this is really important, guys. You really should set up TLS because you don't want to have all of the traffic between you and your Nextcloud installation being unencrypted and basically prone to eavesdropping. So to do that, type in sudo nextcloud.enable-https, let's encrypt, enter your sudo password. Now, we've already made sure that we actually have all of these requirements met. So type in Y, enter an email address for recovery and the renewal of your Let's Encrypt certificate. And finally, enter the domain name that you've created with Cloud DNS. Hit enter and once you browse to your next cloud installation, you should only be able to connect using HTTPS. You can check until when your certificate is valid by clicking on the lock icon, clicking on certificate and there you'll find until when the Let's Encrypt certificate is going to be valid. Once expired, you can simply repeat the last step in order to get another three months worth of free Let's Encrypt certificate. And with that, you have successfully set up your own Nextcloud installation on your own home server and you can start filling it up with data. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to efficiently transfer large volumes of data from your main computer onto your server without having to use the Nextcloud client. Now, the problem with the Nextcloud client is that as soon as your files exceed a few hundred gigabytes, the syncing is going to take an awful lot of time and there is actually a much more easy and fast way to transfer terabytes worth of data from your main computer onto your server. In subsequent videos, I'm also going to show you how to use a reverse proxy on your home server to access different subdomains from Cloud DNS onto your Nextcloud instance, whereas other subdomains might point maybe to different apps running on your home server. So if you're interested in any of these topics, then definitely consider subscribing such that you won't miss the next video. But this is it for today's video, guys. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.